At the end of the year 2023, there was a positive dynamic in the negotiation process between Armenia and Azerbaijan. On December 13, Azerbaijan and Armenia conducted a mutual transfer of servicemen on the section of the Azerbaijani-Armenian border in Gazakh region. During the process, two servicemen of Azerbaijan, Hussein Akundov and Agshin Babirov, were released in Armenia, while our country handed over 32 Armenian servicemen. The exchange took place as a result of negotiations held between the administration of the President of Azerbaijan and the office of the Prime Minister of Armenia. After that, the process of border delimitation was launched. Yerevan and Baku began to actively work on the peace treaty, and it was expected that the parties would agree on the final version of the document at the beginning of the year 2024. Everything seemed to be going as planned, and even Pashinyan suddenly made very positive statements. Thus, in an interview with The Telegraph in early February, he stated that the architecture and principles of the peace treaty between Armenia and Azerbaijan have been agreed upon. Noting that everything will happen after the presidential elections in Azerbaijan, he assured that the Armenian government has this political will to make peace in our region and sign a peace treaty with Azerbaijan. But suddenly, everything changed. As if anticipating this, speaking at the inauguration, Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev astutely noted. Conflicting points in Armenia's position have become the norm. If no contradictory, denying each other statements are made by Armenia within a week, we are already beginning to doubt, I wonder what is going on, and it didn't take long to wait. The very next day, after the inauguration of the Azerbaijani president, and just two weeks after his own fiery speech, on February 15th, at a meeting of the Armenian government, Pashinyan suddenly declared that Azerbaijan was preparing for a large-scale war against Armenia, refused to return the enclaves, and blamed the so-called seizure of villages. Let us recall that this was said by the same Pashinyan, who a week earlier in the same place repeated the Armenian Defense Ministry's statement that there were no signs of preparation for military action on the Azerbaijani side. Then came Munich, where on the margins of the conference the leaders of Azerbaijan and Armenia met and agreed on a peace agenda and a meeting of foreign ministers. But a few days later, Pashinyan flew to Paris, and after talks with Macron again said that peace between Azerbaijan and Armenia is impossible at the moment. There he gave a sensational interview to the France 24 TV channel, where he openly said everything he wanted to say but was afraid to say before, including about his longtime ally Russia, and then, as they call it, went on a rampage and made another lie against both Azerbaijan and the Russian Federation. Then came the visit of the French defense minister to Armenia, the signing of an agreement on arms supplies, and Le Cornu's promise of the presence of his country's military advisor in Armenia, after which Pashinyan's rhetoric finally changed. And then, on the eve of the meeting with Jehun Bayramov, the Armenian foreign minister was also carried away. In his speech at the Conference on Disarmament, he voiced Pashinyan's narrative about the necessity of signing a non-aggression pact and arms control treaty with Baku, saying that it is necessary for the sake of confidence building and peace in the South Caucasus, which is another manipulation of Armenia. After all, Baku has already noted that such proposals are aimed at diverting attention from the process of drafting a bilateral peace treaty. The culmination occurred on the day of the negotiations, February 28th, when the Armenian side went for a blatant provocation. A soldier of the Azerbaijani army who got lost on the border was not only not returned in accordance with the agreements, moreover, a criminal case was opened against him. All this once again and very vividly illustrates Armenia's true intentions to destabilize the situation and destroy the negotiation process. It should be noted that on the same day, February 28th, during a meeting with German Foreign Minister Annalena Burbach, Azerbaijani Foreign Minister Jehun Bayramov stated the unacceptability of the Armenian side's continuation of territorial claims, which are preserved in the constitution and legislation of Armenia, in political and legal processes, as well as the unacceptability of Yerevan's unconstructive position and rhetoric, and emphasized that Armenia's violation of stability, which lasted about five months, was aimed at undermining the peace process. If we add to the above information about the EU mission in Armenia, whose convoy arrived the day before at the infamous metallurgical plant in Arazdayan, and the plans of Armenians with their new European sovereigns to restore its construction, their resurrected revanchist ideas become quite obvious. Undoubtedly, Azerbaijan is ready to give a sharp and decisive response to such destructive and impertinent attacks. Perhaps Armenia will have to be forced to peace.